Cinema Classics is brought to you by the Gateway Film Center, 1550 North High Street, Columbus, Ohio. For the details and showtimes online at gatewayfilmcenter.com. The award-winning Cinema Classics is produced by John DeSando and Johnny DiLoretto. Listen to the shows online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Johnny DiLoretto. And this is Cinema Classics being recorded in the home <laughs> of John DeSander. Yeah, this is really, these are comfortable days. You know? <laughs> like these nice apples here, the Cezanne. <laughs> yeah, by, by way of TJ Maxx. <laughs> okay, no, wow. Yeah, that'd be cool. <laughs> well, <clears throat> recently, Nightcrawler opened with mm -hmm. Jake Gyllenhaal. And we decided... To we... all kinds of critical acclaim. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. And while he won't beat Michael Keaton for the Oscar... He certainly should be nominated. Yeah. And so this is this is a time for us on Cinema Classics to look and see if he's got the stuff to be a classic. And then I think we're, we've decided we will discuss broadcast news in general because this is certainly yeah. about that and something which you know very much about. Well, Jake Gyllenhaal has come a long way. I think this is his finest performance, one of his finer performances. Um, but it's not like he hasn't been giving great performances. He has been. Um, I think he was overshadowed in Brokeback Mountain by um, Heath Ledger, who gave a really amazing performance in that movie. Yeah, and I think he, he rightfully pulled back a little bit and let Ledger take over, which I think is part of what makes Gyllenhaal an interesting subject for us, because mm -hmm. he's not uh, a, an out-there actor. He really works from the inside. He's organic. And I think that kind of makes you say, well, is this guy, does this guy really have it, or is he just a low-key, handsome guy? Yeah, no, I think he does have something else going on. Um, I haven't seen all of Jake Gyllenhaal's films, but the ones that I have seen, I, I like this minor key that he operates in when he takes a lower-budget movie like this and he kind of, you know, lets loose a little bit and creates a character. I thought he was really fine in Source Code. The Duncan oh. Jones movie that came out uh, a few years ago. Yeah. Um, he was really good in uh, David Fincher's uh, Zodiac, but again, maybe overshadowed by some of the, the his co-stars and uh, and the plot line in that instance. Well, he was fantastic in uh, Prince of Persia. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it reminds me, we discussed Brad Pitt. Yeah. And the difference between the two actors is that Brad Pitt made something out of Troy. Yeah, right. And I don't think Gyllenhaal was capable of making no, anything out of Troy. No, he's got a face person. that, whether you like it or not, is, is contemporary. You yeah. know what I mean? There's yeah. just something... I, I don't know if I can articulate what it is about his face, but he just has a 21st, 21st century visage in your eyes. And, um, it's dark, it just doesn't, brooding. It, it doesn't translate to different periods <laughs> and, you know, you can't put that guy in a sword and sandals adventure <laughs> and make it work. Now, in Nightcrawler, he's thinned himself out. Yep. He's, oh, you know what else? I, before we forget, Prisoners, the movie Prisoners. Well, I was just going to say. That is another, that's, that's his sweet spot. <laughs> kind of low budget, something a little pulpy. Yeah. He plays uh, a detective. Yeah, he plays a detective, and he's really good in him. Yeah. He's really great in it. He's doing, he does this little tick in that movie that I thought was interesting. And uh, it's like a little blink, a little nervous Isn't blink. Isn't that great? Because in this one, mm -hmm. he doesn't blink. No, he's got that wide I know. kind of like sociopathic yes. gaze. <laughs> uh, so anyway, in Nightcrawler, he plays a guy who's working his way up from the bottom. He wants to be a nightcrawler. A, an L.A. crime video journalist. And um, so he starts going out and shooting crime scenes and covering them for the news and then selling that footage to the local affiliate. Great moment when you know we're dealing with something very dark. Mm -hmm. When he gets to the scene early, which is what you want to do. You want to yeah, get right. ahead of the Bill Paxton's. Yeah. <laughs> when the light isn't quite right, he moves the body. Oh yeah, so yeah. that's a light well, getting right. That's your first, you know, that's the first real transgression <laughs> that he makes, and and that's where the movie satire really begins. To yes, yes. Begin. And let's not forget that you're right. This is a satire because you can take this seriously mm -hmm. if you want. It is a yeah. It's a dark, it's a darkly kind of uh, 
darkly toned satire. It's not it doesn't it, it's not like Doctor Strange Love type satire where you know that you're supposed to be laughing. This is a movie that's skewering um, broadcast news and uh, but doing it at, at such a in such a tone that it could easily be mistaken for a thriller. Sure, it, it could. Uh, and at points, plays like one. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And one of the things that drives this is not murder and mayhem, but the need for the station at the bottom of the rung to move to the top by having great lead stories. Mm -hmm. And if you've got the video to go with it, yeah, then you're you're in. And what is the term you remember? With if, it, if it bleeds, it leads, right? And then that's a cliche from you know from years ago. However, yeah. it still holds true. Boy. And the movie is really an examination of of that cliche and how far uh, people might go to to get ratings. And you know, having been in the news business, I can tell you, yeah, that's what they lead with. They lead with those stories because that's what people tune in for. Just like they tune in for the weather, mostly the mindless stuff. You know, if you give them anything uh, of depth or substance, you're going to lose ratings. It's and it's just, that's why I listen to NPR. <laughs> yeah, well, it struck me, uh, since I had a, a small time affiliation with your station, mm -hmm. um, that, the, that the people who are in charge of the news have that, that uh, ratings business kind of like a ghost somewhere behind them, moving them, so that they're looking to have that sensational. But I never found anybody there at that station who was as as flagrantly ambitious. Well, you didn't meet the... <laughs> You're okay. Right. <laughs> protected from that. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, you know what? The, it's, they, their portrayal of the, the uh, higher-ups there weren't far off. Oh, well, well, I mean, they, they are they are kind of, you know... It, well, geez. Well, you, you, Renee Rousseau paint. plays the TV news director. Yeah, and she's she was more human than a lot of the ones that I've met. But she was still with. driven. Yeah, uh, to save her job. Exactly, <laughs> she was. You know, it's kind of a fun little fantasy that's going on in this movie that a camera person would be able to um, manipulate the news. That yeah, way. I can't see Adam doing that. At no, all. no, no, my <laughs> former camera guy. No, nor Rodney. <laughs> right. Nor Justin. <laughs> Uh, right. No, none of them. So I, you know, I, I thought about. I, I actually did think about all my former uh, camera people that I worked with. Yeah. And, and how they would view this movie, and I think they would they, they would get a real kick out of it because Gyllenhaal's character is really sort of you know holding the strings in a way that uh, in reality those people don't. Well, do you think Gyllenhaal has the capability of moving on from here? For instance. Uh, you, you do know who his godfather was. And I know you don't, don't know that that's why I want to give you this. It's yeah. my gift to you today. I love that you get on Google <laughs> and do this stuff. Paul Newman. Yeah, Paul Newman is his godfather? Yes. That's and, astonishing. And he, uh, his idols are Newman, uh -huh. um, Anthony Quinn, okay. uh, Sean Penn, Bruce Springsteen, and Bono. Wow. How about that? That is interesting. Isn't that? I mean, to give you an idea who the guy is. And I he, can see, uh, the Paul Newman thing, Anthony Quinn, that's even surprising. You must have met him early on or something. It, 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 um, I, this was interesting. I read recently um, on, online someone speculating as to who could play the Joker in, an, in a new incarnation, in a new Batman film. Hmm. And all of the people that they were kind of, you know, positing as potential successors to Heath Ledger were just seemed a little off and ridiculous to me. As I watched Nightcrawler, I thought, I'll be damned if Jake Gyllenhaal might not be the perfect guy to try to do that. And how beautifully ironic it would be that it would be have been, you know, taking over the role from his Brokeback Mountain coach. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, you have a point there because he, he's capable. One of the things I think that makes him uh, a potentially classic star is that he's able to pull up this darkness. Mm -hmm. And I realize I'm playing on Dan, Donnie Darko. Right, he right. He played a, a, a sure. long time ago. But there was a case where he must have shown real promise. I can remember seeing him as a young man in October Sky which was a biopic of uh, Homer Hickam, 
the guy made rockets or something. Okay. And uh, I remember being impressed with him then because he wasn't, he didn't have a cloying youthfulness about him. Uh, and I've been impressed over the years how he's grown in an actor is out, and how he's shown the ability as in Nightcrawler and Prisoners and Enemy uh, to build distinct characters very different from one another. Annually, this guy um, in Nightcrawler, I forget his name, I forget the character's name, Lou Bloom? Uh, Lou Bloom, yeah. yeah. Clearly, his character Nightcrawler, Lou Bloom, is a very different animal than anyone he's ever played. And if you juxtapose that with his handsome leading man in Source Code, mm -hmm. I think you've got a picture of an actor who can take it yeah. to different levels. Now, whether he can do that over the course of his lifetime, he's only like 34 at this yeah. point. You know, whether he can do that I'm, 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 I'm reserving. Mm -hmm. I just don't know if he has that, uh, even the Paul Newman possibilities. No, I, no, no one has the Paul Newman possibilities. <laughs> right. Or Tom Hardy. See, Tom Hardy's, I'm the same with Tom Hardy. I think he may be the leading contemporary actor, but I'm not seeing a wide range for him. Yeah, he's doing a lot of interesting things, but uh, variations. Yeah. We haven't seen him... Well, I mean, he was—he did transform himself in the movie Bronson. Have you seen that? No. Where he plays Britain's most notorious killer. Oh, okay. And uh, it is a pretty astonishing, uh, heart-racing kind of transformation. Well, I've seen him in Drop and, and Lock. Mm -hmm. So I'm, 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 I'm feeling the same way I'm feeling about Jake. I'm on notice. Yeah. And these guys have got a long time to go to really expand their repertoire to make me think that they are, I always use, my litmus test is Brando. Yeah. Brando can sing. <laughs> or, that's arguable. Well, he can try <laughs> singing. You know, I think we should issue an apology to Jake <laughs> Gyllenhaal for just being all over the place on this show. <laughs>